Hey, just want to do a quick video because I get a lot of emails from guys um, asking about wiring for LED bulbs and different things. And uh, I realize a lot of these guys are younger and they may have never done this stuff before. And sometimes I kind of assume that people, um, you know, just know all this stuff. And and you don't. You 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 sometimes have to uh, uh, do this for the first time. And if no one's shown you, you don't know. So uh, one of the common things is, uh, especially with Chinese-made um, LEDs and LED strips and lights and stuff um, which are probably the most common thing you're gonna find out there especially on eBay or whatever you're going to find the wiring and when someone says it's positive and negative well you know you've got two clear plastic ends how do you know which one positive and negative are and uh, well the quickest way is just test them and find out you can't hurt anything by testing them uh, take a car battery or anything with an LED you can use a 9 volt battery you could use a uh, a double-a battery it doesn't matter but there's always going to be subtle differences in the wires this one for example these two clear wires one of the wires is silver one of the wires is a copper color you can see that I don't know if you can see the difference there this one's copper this one's silver but uh, obviously one of them is positive and one of them is negative and we're not going to hurt anything by hooking it up and finding out so uh, I've got these two alligator clamps just hooked up to a 12 volt car battery lawnmower tractor battery and uh, Basically, we're just going to find out which end is positive and which end is negative. And it's obviously not that. So all we have to do, we have to do is switch around. And then once we see which way they're hooked up, we can see which side is positive and which side is negative. Or we can see that my battery is completely freaking dead. <laughs> Uh-oh. Let's try this back the other way. Bear with me. There we go. Sorry, I just didn't have it hooked up the first time. So anyway, there, that is lighting up. So when we trace this back, we find that this is the... This is the silver wire, and that is negative. The silver was negative, and the copper was positive. Uh, another example, uh, black and black with a white stripe. So we can make assumptions, but you never know for sure. The manufacturer might has, have his own idea as to what positive and negative are, so we can test this too. It's, uh, as I said, you can't hook them up backwards. It's a light. Um, an LED will only light when they're hooked up properly. So, Okay, so that's obviously the... Negative is not the one with the stripe. That will be the positive. And when we switch them around, we find that is correct. Okay, I mean, that's that's all very, very simple stuff. Um, but like I said, if someone hasn't shown you, you... Okay, the other question I get asked about is tapping into wires. So we've already figured out how to uh, find out uh, which, which wires are positive and negative. Um, Again, just hooking them to the uh, to the battery terminals and finding out which uh, or or to a new known power source will figure out um, which terminals are positive and negative. So once you figure that out, you just want to hook it into a circuit. You want to hook it up. So you found, let's say you found one of your original wires, car, motorcycle, boat, whatever, that has power going to it that you want to tap into for some more power. You want to hook up another uh, something else, 12 volt to it. Um, this is a a, a splicer. These are available in different uh, gauges, um, uh, the color uh, color being the, the thing that determines what the gauge size is. Um, anyway, it's I won't bother going into gauge sizes because that gets a little too complicated. Just look at the size of them compared to the size of the wire you're going to be using, and that's uh, the simplest way for you to figure it out. Anyway, so these will basically just slip over a wire that you are tapping power from. So there's one end that's open all the way through, and then there's one of the ends that just goes partly through, and that's where you're going to stick the wire that you're trying to uh, hook up into the circuit with. So you just take that wire and you would slip it in. You don't need to strip it. Uh, this one's stripped, but you don't need to. Oh my God, I have an alarm going off. Hold on a second. <laughs> No 
clue why that was going off, but it was. Anyway, um, as I said, you don't need to have this, uh, this wire doesn't be stripped, it can just be, um, let's just cut it off just to show you anyway. You don't need to strip the end of this wire. You would just stick it in and then take a pair of pliers and press the clip down. It's a, uh, it's like a, a metal pin with two slots in it and as the slots go down past the plastic casing and the wiring, they, they slice through it and they touch the copper wiring inside the, uh, the casing of the wires and that makes the connection between the two and then you simply snap the cover over to keep anything from grounding out. And that's it. You can do that for positives, for negatives. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as you're hooking them up right once you found out which uh, which side, whether, whether it's positive or negative, you want to hook up to. Anyway, there's another way of doing it. Um, as I've said before, soldering is your best way of doing it. We don't always have time. We don't always have the ability to solder. Uh, if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you have to make a quick repair, I mean, you can do this. Anyway, you can also slice the sheathing of wiring as long as you're very careful. You can take a piece of wire, an exacto knife, jackknife, whatever you've got, and gently slice about an inch to an inch and a half, two to three centimeters of the casing. And then you'll just peel the casing back and expose the wire like I've done on this one. And then you just reach under with a small screwdriver with whatever and you kind of just pry the wire up so it's, as you can see, it's, it's open there. And then you can take the wire that you want to hook up to that. Uh, let's see if I have anything ready here that I can use. Okay, I can borrow this one. Anyway, you take the wire, uh, you know, strip off about an inch of the end here, like this, and you can just slip it in, twist it around. Now, this is not a perfect connection. I'm telling you, this isn't the way you always want to do it, just twisting. If you want to make this, per you can do this as a permanent solution as long as you're going to um, solder it. But we know, again, people will use this as a permanent solution without soldering. And it's a pretty good bet that it'll last for years without ever having a problem as long as you seal this up properly. But I'm just going to tell you that the best way to do this is to solder. But if you don't, you can still do this. Then you can either shrink wrap this, you can use electrical tape as long as it's wrapped nicely all around. Uh, liquid electrical tape works perfectly as well. Uh, we'll seal that up and uh, that's another way of splicing into a wire without having to remove everything, without having to take everything off. You're just tapping into the, uh, the wire itself as long as you recover the exposed wire when you're done in some way. So uh, that's two ways of splicing into wires um, and uh, just determining positives and negatives on LED bulbs, um, LED wiring, because like I said, a lot of times they come from the factory without. Um, this is what you expect. You expect red and black, but... Uh, a lot of manufacturers, it's not that, that's not the case anymore. So, um, anyway, as long as you know that you can, you're not going to hurt anything by, by testing them and determining which uh, positive and negative are, then you're good. Anyway, I hope this helps somebody.